and uh, so, uh, we will give you uh, an opportunity to ask questions as those are presented, but also at the very end, uh, we'll be providing a, an opportunity for anybody to ask questions. Uh, so with that said, uh, thank you for joining us to, uh, tonight, and uh, I'll pass it on to Philip. Okay, we're going to start sharing the uh, presentation. I said we would. Oh my gosh, where'd it go? Can't see it yet, Philip. Yep, it's pulling up. I guess it's slow. I don't know why it's not pulling up. It's so slow. It's loading, it's low. So while Philip, it's uh, uh, trying to work out the, the presentation. So basically, you know, uh, with NRCS, uh, we have primarily two programs that we, you know, serve to the private landowners. And uh, for both of these programs, uh, EQIP and CSB, uh, we have had quite a, a significant increase from last uh, fiscal year. Uh, I think, you know, in the, between both programs, uh, uh, last year, uh, let me just put it this way in terms of number, this year with co those two programs combined, we have about $67 million of, of financial assistance available. Uh, last fiscal year, we obligated about 40, 46 plus million dollars to ag producers. Uh, so very, very good opportunity to, uh, you know, to uh, uh, provide assistance to producers. That's it. Philip, ready? Yeah, can, you, can you see it now? Yes. Yes, sir. sir. Okay. I don't remember who was first, Walter. Next slide, me, Philip. Okay. Oh, my bad. Good evening. My name is Ken Lackman. I'm the Area 3 Grazing Specialist out of the Palmetto Area Office. <laughs> Towards the very end of the presentation, my name and email address will pop up. If anybody has any requests for a copy of the PowerPoint or needs some assistance, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you. A um, little bit about who NRCS is. We are, an, we are an organization, a government entity that provides technical and financial assistance to all sorts of landowners, um, forest landowners, farmers, ranchers. And at the end of this presentation, if you need any additional help, please just reach out to your NRCS office. They are more than happy to provide you one-on-one -on -one assistance. Next slide, please. So as stated, the majority of this presentation is gonna be recorded. There'll be scattered break section sessions throughout the presentation for you to ask questions. But if you've got some questions that you don't want to be on the recording, at the very end, we will turn the recording off and then open it again for questions. Next slide. We're gonna cover a lot of information this evening Please don't let it overwhelm you, uh, but we're going to first cover how to find a local office. Maybe if you've got property here in Florida, but it also works if you have property uh, in another part of the United States. I'm um, going to give you a website address that'll show you how to find information about CSP, 
which is the Conservation Stewardship Program, and EQIP, which is the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. Going to give a brief overview of the differences between CSP and EQIP. Going to give you some basic information on how to apply for CSP. Uh, CSP is a little unique as far as the producer map from EQIP. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what type of map you need to bring in with you. Going to talk a little bit about CSP payments, eligibility requirements, share some uh, sample cost estimates, going to talk about uh, enhancements, practices, what's uh, different about them. And then again, there'll be questions throughout for anybody to either put some information in the chat or unmute your mic and go ahead and ask the question. After you've asked the question, please uh, go back and mute it again. For those that aren't aware, lower left corner of your computer screen should be the little mute button. Next slide, please. So main thing we wanted to share was how to find your NRCS office. If you go to this website and this will pop up, um, the first thing you wanna do is the contact us and you're gonna to wanna to look for the local information for your office. Next slide, please. So for this example, we put in Florida, went with Manatee County, and you can see for the Sarasota Service Center, um, the contact information showed up. I had an interesting situation this morning. Client asked for some information. I asked what county, made the assumption they were Florida. Turns out they were in the Virgin Islands. I went to this very site, typed in Virgin Islands, found the information and shared it with the landowner and they're gonna reach out to their local service center. So I actually did it this morning for places that NRCS exist and they're all there. Next slide, please. Uh, all the information we're presenting you is important, but wanted to stress, you do not need to fully understand CSP or any of the other Farm Bill programs prior to reaching out to NRCS. The information here is just to help you, to try to give you some more information, but by all means, just reach out to the NRCS office and they will gladly walk you through the different programs. Next slide. So we wanted to talk a little bit about getting assistance and some information about the program and the initiatives. Again, it's on the same www.nrcs.usda.gov. Next slide. So when you click on the programs and incentives, in this particular example, the Conservation Stewardship Program pops up. If you click on it, there's all kinds of information to pick from. And you'll also see there is a link also to the EQIP Quality Incentive Program. Next slide. When I was going through, here's just an example um, how to how CSP works. There's some stuff about how to get started. But if you're interested in hearing success stories from other landowners that have been involved with CSP, if you click on this success stories, you will get a bunch of stories to, to select from, help you um, learn a little bit more about CSP. Next slide, please. So two of our big programs, like Walter mentioned, we've got EQIP, we've got Conservation Stewardship Program, CSP. Um, we use the acronyms a lot. We uh, are just an acronym driven agency, so we do apologize, but we'll try very hard when we're working with you to explain the different acronyms. Um, EQIP, that is to address resource concerns. Later on, I will uh, present a definition of resource concerns. Example might be controlling invasives or improving your livestock watering facility. And CSP, that is kind of an incentive for what you're currently doing on your property. And then we just ask for a little bit more conservation activities 
to make things a little better. For EQIP, anywhere from a one to seven year contract, whereas CSP is a five year contract only. Next slide, please. So if you're interested in the program, there's basically a sign up. You use what we call a CPA 1200. That is our application. There is absolutely no fee for signing up. You sign up, as Walter was saying, Friday, November 17th, 2023 is our batching date. We take applications throughout the year, but we batch them at certain times throughout the year, and then we process them. But if you sign up, you learn a little bit more about the program and you decide to back out, you just need to notify the NRCS office that you want to cancel your application and there's absolutely no fee. Um, if you've got the 1200 form, when you go online, it's available. Make sure you have the latest version, which right now appears to be the October 2021. And then if for some reason in section two, the program that you wanna sign up for isn't there, you can just write it in that 2A section and that will get you into the program. Next slide, please. So for CSP, we're working with all of your different lands. So when you come into the office, we ask that you bring a map in that kind of shares a lot of this information. Kind of where the property is located, section, township, and range, um, maybe some roads that show where the location is. We're looking for an address, but that address could be different from where you have your mail sent to. Um, fences, field boundaries, how you delineate one field from another. Do you have like certain names or certain um, numbering system that you use? That tends to help us. The individual land use, I will cover later on our definitions, but is it mainly crops? Do you graze it? Is it a hayland that's grazed sometimes or it's mainly pasture and you occasionally cut uh, hay on it? Um, forest, those type of things. Um, actual field acreage. Do you have, you know, this is a 45 acre field, put that information. Some of that information may also be at the Farm Service Agency if you've already signed up and we can work with FSA to gather that acreage. Uh, land management. Is it all managed by one individual or do you have different managers? Maybe the Grove actually have a, a company that handles all that for you, but it's located there on the ranch, or you may handle everything. Uh, equipment, is the same equipment used, or do you have different, uh, the, the ranch has a different set of equipment than the Grove. So are they two totally different? The caretaker brings in all their own equipment. They're really a, a totally separate operation, or is it all one? Um, also would like to know land control. Is it all the same ownership? Um, family member owns one block and another family owns another, but it's all co covered under one ranch name. Um, are you leasing a part of it? Do you lease it from an outside individual? Do you lease it from your family? Is your brother-in-law, sister, et cetera? Um, a little bit about your cropping history and the irrigation history. Was it just recently turned into a crop field or has it been cropped for the last couple of years? Um, has it been irrigated? And then any other features that would help um, location of watering facilities, pipes, wells, if you've got some sort of um, commercial underground gas line or something that we should be aware of. So anything you can do to help, that would be nice. Next slide, please. So while you're searching the internet, one of the things you might come across is the fact sheet and it gives a little bit about the operation map, um, kind of what kind of information we're looking for, how to enroll, that type of stuff. So this is just an example. This stuff is also written down in that NRCS area and you can find lots of useful information. Next slide, please. Towards the end of the presentation, middle to the end, some people are gonna talk about different enhancements. They're gonna talk about different practices. 
So our enhancements are based on our existing NRCS conservation practices. And what we're basically trying with an enhancement is get you to increase the level of conservation that you're doing on the property. Um, we utilize a conservation assessment and ranking tool. We call it another acronym CART. Um, that way everybody is assessed and ranked uniformly. And I mentioned before, we look at resource concerns. It's basically an identified conservation issue or problem. Uh, an example would be soil erosion or you have invasive species like tropical soda apple or smut grass on your property. Next slide, please. NRCS, we have different land designations. You'll see later on in the presentation when they're talking about the different enhancements, this particular enhancement is applicable to this particular land use. So these are our land uses. Uh, crop and hayland, we kind of lump them together. So if you've got a pasture that is grazed the majority of the time, we would call that pasture land. But if it's hayland and you occasionally graze it, we would call it cropland or hayland. If you're growing strawberries or you're growing citrus, that would fall under the crop category. Uh, forest, those particular areas that are supporting trees and you're managing it for a forest product. Uh, farmstead, that might be where you've got your barns, your equipment, um, your headquarters, that would be the farmstead. Uh, rangeland, that's kind of a native area that you graze or have wildlife, um, and it's not as intensively managed as your pasture. And then we have kind of a lump all associated ag land that's maybe an area that, you know, when the center pivot goes around, you've got a little outlying area that really has no use. It's not really cultivated. That would be an associated ag land area. Next slide, please. CSP is a little different from EQIP in that CSP has a minimum payment. And this is a change for this year. Last year, contracts that were issued had a $1,500 minimum, and that'll be shown later on in some of the cost estimates. That infer, or that uh, dollar amount has been raised to $4,000. CSP also has a maximum payment per farm bill. It's $200,000, and that's over that five-year contract. And CSP Classic and Equip Classic both have separate payment limitations. So there's for CSP, there's a $200,000 payment limit, and that's for the current farm bill. For Equip Classic, $450,000 payment limit for the current farm bill. The new farm bill hasn't come out yet. When it comes out, we'll be interested to see what the new limits are. Take home message, a participant, if you qualify, you could have up to $450,000 for Equip and then a separate $200,000 for CSP. Total of up to 650,000. Next slide, please. Wanted to share some of the eligibility requirements that our agency um, will be working with our sister agency, Farm Service Agency, and NRCS, we have some eligibility requirements for CSP. Um, we work with FSA to get confirmation of control of land. Um, we also address adjusted gross income. And then we also have the AD 1026, which is our wetland form. So these are just some, some sample items uh, that the NRCS staff will work with you. And this is some of the eligibility paperwork we'll need for this particular program. Next slide, please. One of the other things after we get the 1200 application, um, by federal law and federal acts, there's some stuff that we need to take a look at. So NRCS staff will work with you on cultural resources, any threatened endangered species concerns. Uh, we've got some Food Security Act uh, items that we have to address if they happen to be applicable, uh, any type of wetland impacts, and then any other items um, that might be unique to that land that tie back to relevant federal laws. And some of that, if you're closer to the coast, 
we've got a little bit different items, then you're more in the center of the state. Next slide, please. After the CSP application is taken, we've evaluated it with you, we've gone through the ranking process, and your application becomes pre-approved. That means we're gonna move forward and turn it into an actual contract. NRCS will be asking uh, for an AD 1199A form, which is basically your routing and accounting information. We make payments electronically, so we will need to obtain this payment information. And once the contract is signed and it becomes um, a, a legal binding document, every time we go to make a payment, we will also reach out and confirm that that information is correct. Nothing worse than a producer changing their banking information. We electronically send it to the old account and then it takes us months to figure out where it went, get the money back and resend it. So if you do get a contract awarded, you do wanna make sure that NRCS has your latest and greatest banking information. Next slide, please. You will see this come up in a little bit. We talk about practices, we talk about enhancements. Um, practices are meant to help a producer meet a resource concern that they're not meeting and an enhancement is you're kind of exceeding that resource concern that you've already addressed with the practice and CSP is going to be implementing enhancements which you're not only doing the practice but you're also adding some enhancements so you go above and beyond. Next slide. So some examples of practices might be something like mulching, irrigation water management, cover crop, uh, conservation crop rotation. Next slide, please. So again, back to the NRCS website, we have all kinds of information about our practices on what we call our field office technical guide, our EFOTG. And in this particular example, you click on the state of Florida, and then you would go over to section four, our practice standards and supporting documentation is all there. Next slide, please. In this particular example, we selected Florida, and then we selected prescribed burning. You'll see that 338, that is our practice standard number and that will become relevant later on when you hear these different enhancement and practices. Then if you click on the actual um, conservation practice standard, that's that CSP, that will tell you everything about that practice. Next slide, please. Here is a sample of our prescribed burning standard and I've just got page one and page five, but there's lots of information um, that you can read about it. And again, our NRCS staff is more than happy to help you. Uh, they can pull this stuff up and go through it with you line by line. Next slide, please. So the practices and the enhancements, they're kind of connected. So if you wanna find out more information about the CSP enhancements, and enhancements are unique to CSP. You cannot get an enhancement through EQIP. But if you go to the CSP page, you go to the how to get started and down towards the bottom, you will see I've kind of blown it up. It's for more information, please visit. And then there's the enhancements and bundles section. And when you click on that, you will have more information. Next slide, please. So here, for example, we were talking about um, burning. And in this particular one, this has got some information about all the different uh, enhancements. And you can click on them and read about them. Next slide, please. Here is a sample of what a enhancement sheet would look like. 
And again, I've included the first page and the last page. This one happens to be four pages, but that's what they typically look like when you pull them up off the internet. Next pay, uh, slide, please. So I kind of wanted to bring the enhancement and the practice together. So for this particular example, we talked about the 338. That's the NRCS practice. The E before it stands for enhancement. Enhancements are uh, basically associated with the CSP program, the Conservation Stewardship Program. And then the letter at the very end, each practice has numerous enhancements. In this particular case, there's three of them. Some of them you'll see will be enhancement Q. That means there's that many different enhancements to pick from. But we talked about the applicable land use, the, the practice, the enhancement uh, sheet tells you there's the, the practice number, 338 prescribed burning, the applicable land use. Those are the definitions we talked about. It's got the resource concern, which we mentioned, and it's also got the enhancement lifespan. And you will see throughout the next couple of presentations, oh. they talk about the applicable land use, the enhancement lifespan, that type of deal. So we'll cover that a little later. Next slide, please. Does anybody have any questions on the information we've presented so far? I see there's a couple of things in the chat. And I see some people have been responding back. Thank you. If anybody has there any questions, unmute. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next section. Next slide, please. This is a list of all the individuals that will be presenting uh, all the different enhancements and some cost information uh, over the next few minutes. Um, each presenter. When you get done at your question section, if you'll advance to the next person till their name shows up and then just pass it on to that next person. With that, I will turn it over to Anisha. Good evening. My name is Anisha Gary Cyprian and I'll be going over these sample cost estimates. Um, next slide, please. The following cost estimate presented will be an estimate per operation. Um, each will be different. We haven't received the fiscal year 24 cost estimate rates. Um, so for visual purposes, we're going to be using 23 rates, but showing a minimum of 4,000. Next slide, please. For this operation, it is approximately 30 acres of cropland. Um, let's say we have strawberries here. They have EAP1 which is the existing activity, activity playment of um, land uses. Here, we use four as an example, and then you have EAP2, which is based on the resource concern that you're addressing at that time of application. Um, for this example, they're using a cover crop, which is 340, and doing 340F um, as enhancement. And as stated before, the base enhancement is used to, as a foundation for the enhancement. So year four, the minimum payment is 4,000, Usually, we don't practice um, schedule practices in the first year based on the time uh, constraint. So in the second year, they have the um, the base practice and also the enhancement. So the year that the body view changes. Next slide, please. This one, we have an example of 100 acres of cropland. Um, like I said before, we use four as the EAP2 number. They're also doing cover crop uh, and enhancement and a base payment. So at the bottom, you see that year one is 4,000. In year two, um, it kind of goes up a little bit, but the acres did decrease. So that's why the number is different. Next slide, please. This is an example of 40 acres of cropland. Um, they have four EAP2. They're also doing the enhancement and the base practice. So at the bottom, they all uh, only have 4,000 because they didn't meet the um, threshold. So that's the minimum payment for this. Next slide, please. This is an example of pasture land. We have 1,000 acres, um, four EAP2. They're doing a base practice of prescribed grazing each year. 
year two through five, and also having the enhancement EAP um, 528Q, which is body condition scoring, and to be explained later on today. Um, the mental payment is down at the bottom, and also the payment based on the practice and enhancement they implement. Next slide, please. This is an example of a 500 pasture, acre pasture. Um, they're doing the prescribed grazing each year, year through two through five, and also the enhancement at the same time. This one here, we have the 4,000, which is the minimum for year one, and it goes up two through five because they implemented an enhancement. Next slide, please. This is an example of a 100 acre pasture. Um, they're also doing the base practice and the enhancement every year. And as you see at the bottom, they're only receiving 4,000 because maybe they didn't meet the threshold. So that's the minimum payment they would receive. And again, the prices um, that we are listing are for fiscal year 23 because 24 haven't been uploaded yet. So it could change. Next slide, please. Any questions? We have a question in the chat. No, that's not a limit on resource um, enhancements you can do in a contract. Yeah, there's a question from Ms. Puig uh, about the limit of enhancements. Uh, regardless, they may not be uh, you know, a, a limit. We do not, particularly if it's the first time with uh, working with the program, we do not recommend that uh, you know producers sign up for for a, a lot. Uh, you know the CSP has an option for renewals. So after the five year of the contract end, uh, it gives an opportunity for producers to basically renew and re-enroll their operations. And at that time, they they would have to agree to do additional activities. So uh, we like to call it, you know, it's best to take it for a, you know, to a, a test drive first, and then, and then, you know, that way you also uh, keep some options available if you, you know, if you like the program, suits your operation well, then you have a chance to when it's time for renewing it. You have some some options of additional stuff to you know to do. Walter, I'll need you and Ken to help me with the chat. I, I to monitor that. I cannot see it when I'm presenting. The minimum payment for this year is started fiscal year twenty four. That's a question in the chat. When did that four um four thousand minimum per year go up in effect? It's for this year. Yeah, and Anisha or Taylor, can you go back real quick on one of the any of those payment option slides? Let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, hold a second. Which which yeah. one you want? The just one here. Just as a quick reminder. Just as a quick which reminder. One? presenting or asking a question can you ensure that your microphone is muted yeah so uh basically the i just wanted to mention something real quick on the you know uh on those cost examples that you got you know you could see that for the total payment, you know, the total payment for a given year comes from those four different uh, lines, rows that, uh, you know, the there's a payment for land use. There's a payment based on resource concerns. And, you know, those two, though, is the ones that are highlighted in yellow. Uh, so, those, you know, when you agree to do an additional an activity, that's what makes you eligible to receive these two payments. And these two payments are just based on, you know, the, the acres in your land use that you're enrolling 
and then also the number of resource concerns that when we do an assessment of your operation, how many resource concerns uh, we determine that you know you are meeting, and then you get basically you know payments for those. That, you know that that's the part when we say about the program rewards producers for previous conservation efforts. These are the two payments that that do that. And then obviously, you know, the, the other part of the payments would be the actual activities, which could be a, a practice or an actual enhancement. But thank you for that. Hold on a second. I'm admitting some more people that I can't get to. I'm, they're admitting now. Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, all right. Uh, my name is Nathan Fickert. I am the state resource conservationist. Uh, I'm going to go over just a few enhancements here, uh, as will others uh, after me. Uh, again, this is not an all-inclusive list of enhancements. There are a lot of enhancements, and it it will be very specific to the resource concerns on your operation um, and your objectives, uh, land uses, et cetera. So just keep that in mind as we're going through this. Uh, there may be other options that fit your operation better. Um, and best, best thing to do is to work with your local NRCS representative uh, to figure out what that is for you. Uh, so go ahead, next slide. All right, so first one I'm gonna cover is E528Q. As Ken already mentioned, E stands for enhancement. 528 is our conservation practice standard prescribed grazing. And Q is the alphabetical sequence of the enhancement. So obviously there are quite a few grazing uh, enhancements since we're all the way at the letter Q. Um, Body condition scoring is a way to evaluate your cattle and see how they're doing. Um, what is their health? What is their energy reserves through the degree of fatness? Um, and that can help us uh, manage and, and monitor our grazing practices. Uh, additionally on this, you'll see on every enhancement sheet, like Ken said, we're gonna have our land use, we're gonna have the resource concern that it applies to, and we're gonna have a lifespan. And again, all those factors are very important in deciding which enhancements are uh, gonna be the best for your operation and your CSP contract. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so here as an example, uh, we're gonna, you're gonna get an, a grazing plan written by NRCS. Uh, we're going to develop a body condition score monitoring plan. And by using those two items together, uh, we're going to try to uh, better dial in your uh, grazing and livestock management. So, you know, do we have a, a body condition score that is staying the same? Um, maybe we don't need to change any management. Are we declining or are we increasing? Uh, you know, depending on those results, maybe there is changes we need to make to the grazing plan uh, to ensure that uh, our cattle uh, livestock are in good shape. And that's, uh, that's the intent of an enhancement like this. Uh, next slide. All right, any questions on that one? All right, so next slide. 
Next one, E327A. So enhancement, conservation practice standard 327, conservation cover, and this is the first one in that sequence. Uh, again, we see our land uses, we see our resource concern, uh, which is animals. In this case, we're focusing uh, more on uh, the wildlife aspect of animals, um, beneficial insects and pollinators. Um, and that enhancement lifespan is five years. Uh, next slide. All right, so with this enhancement, our goal is to uh, take a selected area, plant a, a cover that um, provides at least 80% of uh, cover on the soil, but we're also looking for blooming species to spread throughout the year. So we're gonna try to have a mix of flowering species, some that bloom early, mid and late in the year so that we provide those uh, blooming, uh, blooming species for those pollinators throughout the year. Um, insecticides should not be used in that, in that habitat planting. We're trying to protect that area, leave it undisturbed. We can use herbicides if needed for site prep, but once that cover is established, we should be doing uh, as much as we can to leave it alone and undisturbed for those pollinator species. This one is really going to take that local NRCS expertise, to make sure we get that correct mix plan for that site. And um, that's what you would that's what you would do. You'd work with your local NRCS person, uh, try to get a mix that meets all these requirements, and then that becomes your CSP, uh, one of your CSP enhancements. All right, next. Any questions on that? All right, next slide. All right, E340F, this is a cover crop enhancement. There are a lot of cover crop enhancements. This is uh, by no means all of them. We have lots of options when it comes to cover crops. But here again, you know, we've got our practice, we've got our land use. Resource concern here is soil, lifespan is one year. The goal of this enhancement is to break up soil compaction. So we're gonna be looking for cover crop species that provide a fibrous root, but also a deep root to help address that compaction resource concern. Uh, next slide, please. All right, in this case, because of the resource concern we're trying to treat, you can't burn the crop residue, you can't harvest or graze the cover crop. If we need to inoculate the seed that we're planting, um, we, well, if, if there's not rhizobium present in, in these areas, we might need to inoculate the seed. Um, and again, we want that fibrous and deep root to really address that compaction resource concern. Any questions on that? That's the next slide, I think. All right, and next slide for the last one I'm gonna cover. So enhancement 315A, so that's a herbaceous weed treatment. It's the first one in the sequence. We're gonna use some sort of herbaceous weed treatment method to try to achieve the desired ecological site in an area. So if we have a situation where an invasive species has moved in, we do not have the desired site um, characteristics that we want, we're, we're gonna use this enhancement to treat that invasive species and hopefully get that area back to what we would want to see. So next slide. Couple pictures here, just example of a Caesar weed treatment in a slash pine forest and under a hardwood hammock. So again, in this case, Caesar weed has moved in and we're gonna come in with this enhancement herbaceous weed treatment, um, try to eliminate and manage that species to achieve the desired condition. Um, you know, again, every one of these enhancement sheets is gonna have different uh, criteria and specifics that need to be followed. Uh, you have to go to each one to make sure that you can implement those different 
different criteria. But for example, on this one, um, you know, we're going to develop a map of the areas that need to be treated. Um, if something happens during implementation, uh, you know, you guys need to notify NRCS, hey, the treatment went really well. I think, uh, I think we're where we need to be. Uh, hopefully we have documentation of that. Or, hey, the treatment's not working. We might need to do something else. And then NRCS can come in and evaluate the situation and see where we go from there. Um, keeping records, pictures are always great. What kind of chemical was applied, when it was applied, the rate, et cetera. All those things might be specified in that enhancement sheet. Um, things that you'll need to do uh, ultimately to complete that enhancement and get the payments that were talked about previously. All right, so that is the end of my slides. I see a question in the chat. You offer treatments for organic crops in pastures. Um, we certainly do. May or may not be a great fit for CSP. That's really gonna de depend on the enhancement. So in an organic situation where we can't use conventional chemicals, uh, we might have to use mechanical treatment methods to stay within those organic parameters. Uh, or we might need to look to other enhancements altogether, maybe other programs that allow us to treat resource concerns in an organic system uh, better than a conventional system. So it's going to be real site specific in a case by case basis, but we can certainly work with that. Um, we just might not be able to do uh, certain enhancements. Uh, yes, the recording, uh, we are recording and it will be made available. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Good evening, I'm Amy Smith, the Area 2 Resource Conservationist and I'll be discussing three enhancements. Um, so if we could just go on to the next slide and I'll go ahead and start with the first one. Um, so this is another grazing enhancement that's available and it's E5280, um, which is clipping mature forages to set back vegetative growth for improved forage quality. Um, and it's the timely clipping of mature forages through mowing, swathing, or other mechanical cuttings that will increase the forage palatability. Uh, for this enhancement, you will need a written prescribed grazing plan and the plan should take into consideration um, the cutting forage species to a stubble height that will promote the vigor and health of the forage, avoid clipping when forage is entering dormancy, and the removal of excessive stems during the cutting process to allow the sunlight to reach the lower canopy. Um, if you can, go ahead to the next slide. So this slide is um, the first two pages of the 528.0 enhancement document that provides a description of the enhancement and the criteria, um, most of which was discussed on the first slide. But what you can note on this is that the practice <clears throat> is only applicable to pasture land and it has a one year lifespan. Um, if you can go on to the next slide. Um, this slide provides information on what is expected of both the participant and NRCS. So the participant is expected to have a grazing plan prior to implementing this enhancement and that will be provided by NRCS. Um, the participant will need to identify all grazing areas and locations where the clippings will take place. Um, keep records on the grazing heights as well as document before and after pictures um, of all the clippings. Um, as stated, before NRCS will provide the client a copy of the grazing plan and discuss it with the client prior to um, them starting the enhancement. Um, and then NRCS will be reviewing all the documentation provided by the client after implementation uh, to make sure that the um, enhancement criteria has been met. So you can go to the next slide, um, which is just asking if anyone has any questions on this enhancement. Okay, I don't see any questions. If someone thinks of anything, we can um, always come back. So um, the next enhancement is E472A. 
um, which is managing livestock access to water bodies to reduce nutrients or pathogens to surface water. Um, with this enhancement, you will be installing structures um, and or barriers like fencing to implement a grazing plan that restricts livestock access to water bodies. Um, since this enhancement limits livestock access to sensitive areas, it does require a grazing plan to be followed and implemented. Um, go to the next slide. Um, this enhancement has a practice lifespan of 10 years and it's applicable to cropland, pasture, range, associated ag, um, and farmstead. Um, the rest of the information on the slide was provided um, with the first one, so we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, this slide states what is expected of the participant in NRCS. So um, a grazing plan will be provided to the client prior to implementation of the enhancement, and it will include the areas that have grazing restrictions. Um, after implementation, the participants required to provide livestock in and out forms to the NRCS for um, verification the criteria was met. So do you have any questions on this one? Okay, so the last one I'll discuss is E381A, uh, Silva Pasture to Improve Wildlife Habitat. With this enhancement, the participant will be establishing a combination of trees, shrubs, um, and or compatible forages uh, that provide forage, shade, and or shelter for livestock for the purpose of enhancing wildlife cover and shelter. So uh, tree and forage species that are selected must be adapted to the site and compatible with the planned management of the site. Um, if trees will be added to existing pasture, site preparation should be based on existing vegetation and soil conditions. Uh, trees will be planted at an appropriate density to allow acceptable forage production and wood products. Uh, plantings uh, must also be protected from grazing until an adequate stand is established. Um, and this enhancement also requires a prescribed grazing plan. So we can go to the next slide. Um, again, uh, this includes a lot of the criteria that was on the first slide, but uh, do note that it has a practice lifespan of 15 years and it's applicable to pasture, forest, and associated ag land. So you can go to the next slide. Um, this slide discusses what is expected of the participant in NRCS. The trees, shrubs, and or forage species will be listed and incorporated into a grazing plan that's provided to the client. Um, the client will need to document pictures of the plantings and provide fertilizer records if applicable. Um, livestock in and out documents are required for this enhancement as well, um, and documentation uh, will need to be provided to NRCS um, for review to make sure everything meets. Um, so the next slide is just if anyone has any questions about um, that enhancement or any of the other ones that I discussed. Okay, if there's no questions, I think we can move on to Howard. Hi, I'm Howard Harrison, District Conservationist in Okeechobee, Florida. I'm going to be talking about three enhancements as they relate to forage harvest management, uh, forage planting, and pest management. Next slide, please. The first one I'm going to talk about is E511A, the harvesting of crops, uh, meaning hay or small grains using measures that allow desired species to flush or escape. Uh, applicable land use is uh, crop being annual and mixed, uh, crop being perennial, which is our hayfields, pasture and range. Uh, basically, this applies to anywhere where we're uh, harvesting uh, forages through uh, mechanical means. The enhancement lifespan is one year. This enhancement is uh, developed to allow wildlife escapes when uh, harvesting and conservation measures included during uh, nesting and fawning season. Our primary nesting season in Florida is March through July and fawning in the spring. Uh, so next slide, please. When we are harvesting outside of the uh, 
primary nesting and fawning season, we have to implement at least two of the following strategies. Uh, not cut hay at least one third of the acres each year, leaving idle strips that are at least 30 feet wide. Cut hay outside, one third of the acres, sorry, outside of the uh, primary nesting season and increase forage heights after mowing to uh, specific uh, minimum heights. Uh, we have some recommendations on uh, the minimum height that forages will have to be cut and what species would require. Uh, so work with your local uh, NRCS office to help you with those specifics. With that said, next slide. Uh, if we cut hay during the uh, fawning and nesting season, we have to adapt at least two of these uh, following. Attach a flush bar on the mower or harvester as uh, pictured here below. Conduct harvesting during daylight hours or uh, begin harvesting patterns either uh, from one end to the other in a back and forth pattern or in the center and the field outward. What we're not wanting to do is start outward work way inward where we're trapping the uh, wildlife to the middle and they have no escape. So for this, uh, during the implementation, you need to take uh, photos of the cutting operations, record what forages, field, uh, what height prior to cutting, and then what it was cut to, and you'll provide that documentation to NRCS. Next question, or next slide, please. Any questions? Uh, Somebody have a question? Okay, next question, or next slide, please. The next one up is the E512L, diversifying forage base with interceding of forbs and legumes to increase pasture quality. This is applicable on pasture and associated ag land. Uh, it's a five-year lifespan. On this one here, we're going to uh, overseed with uh, forbs and legumes. Uh, a poplar uh, legume that is planted in South Florida is Ashenomony, also known as deer fetch so it provides uh, grazing opportunities for the livestock and uh, wildlife as well uh, is established so next slide with this here like I said we're going to select perennial forbs uh, and legumes to plant uh, based on the compatibility for the your where you'll be planting climate soil uh, field conditions we will follow planning recommendations from the State Land Grant University, which is the University of Florida. Uh, they recommend uh, the amount of seed, uh, nutrient requirements, and time of planting. Interseeding you know, method will not restrict plant emergence or leave the site vulnerable to erosion. Uh, with that, during implementation, you're going to keep records of seed tags, photograph of planting preps, any materials purchased uh, and used for the implementation uh, to document the uh, seed rate based on the pure live seed of the um, seed that is being planted and then any inoculations and things like that will have to be taken care of. Next slide, please. Uh, make sure that the plants will help meet livestock forage demands during times of normal uh, forage. Uh, talked about the uh, soil amendments already based on a current soil test and a, our definition of current is a soil test within the past three years. Uh, talked about the inoculation, uh, coated seeds and things like that. Next slide, please. Any questions on this one? Next slide, please. Uh, the final one I'll be talking about is E595B, which is to reduce risk of pesticides in surface water and air by utilizing uh, IPM PAMS techniques. Uh, what IPM stands for is the Integrated Pest Management, and PAMS is the prevention, avoidance, monitoring, and suppression. 
uh, to reduce pesticides being through runoff or wind drift. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll have to, for this one here, the criteria, you have to choose at least four activities from the techniques for, for below, below. Prevention includes uh, cleaning equipment and gear when leaving the field, use pest-free seeds, uh, changing irrigation, and um, things like that. Avoidance activities is maintaining a healthy and diverse plant community. In other words, uh, trying to keep, you know, grass cover on all things, don't have bare spots where weeds can come in, using pest resistant varieties, crop rotation and refuge management. Uh, South Florida, when we buy cattle that's not already on our premise, we bring it in, it's a good idea to use a confinement pasture where you're uh, bringing the cattle in, holding them, allowing them to uh, release any uh, seed that they may be bringing in from off site and uh, instead of spread it through all your pastures. Next slide. Monitoring activities include scouting both pest and beneficial organisms. Uh, with that said, uh, the tropical soda apple beetle is a good uh, organism to have. Uh, you can scout for it and keep it going. Uh, monitoring can include drones and other remote, uh, remote sensing tools to help detect pest issues. Suppression basically is uh, can be cultural, mechanical, biological, or chemical. Uh, with that said, uh, pulling weeds by hand uh, is a you know mechanical. Uh, biological is the tropical soda apple I've talked about, and then spot spraying with chemicals instead of broadcast spray the whole field. We're we're targeting individual plants or areas where there are uh, higher influx of these species. Uh, want to uh, use precision application equipment is one way to do it and substituting lower risk, risk pesticides. With that then, we're keeping up uh, with, um, as you implement, you'll keep up with the time you scouted, uh, document the dates, uh, what you found, uh, how you treated, how you used your avoidance and uh, prevention methods and then records of how you applied chemicals. Next slide, please. Any questions? If not, next slide and I'll turn it over to Jesse. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jesse Guerre. I'm the area resource conservationist for area one. Um, that's basically the Florida Panhandle. I'm going to be covering uh, enhancements. Uh, E612C, which is a tree and shrub establishment. Uh, E66F, 666F, which is a uh, forest stand improvement. And a E528R, which is a prescribed grazing. Next slide, please. The E612C is establishing tree and shrub species to restore native plant communities. Next slide. Uh, just as an example, um, most of the panhandle has been designated as longleaf priority counties. These are two uh, pictures of different age classes of longleaf that have been planted. Next slide, please. The, uh, as I said, the, the E612C is a tree and shrub establishment. The applicable land use is forest land. The resource concerns are dressed as animals, as in wildlife, and uh, the, your, your plant condition uh, resource concern, which is your uh, ecological community. Um, the criteria for this planting the species that uh, are planned to be planted will be adopted for the region uh, and they will be planned to be planted at a density that is appropriate for the site index. 
um, with this practice to uh, meet criteria where appropriate you will be required to conduct a site preparation that's that is actually a facilitating practice to any tree plantings that we have um, other practices can be applied to uh, coincide with this like i said the um site preparation and it depends on your your particular site index next slide please what you see here is uh what you will receive um you will work with a planner a conservation planner will come to your site and uh and, and go over things with you and it will be planned to, according to um, your specific property. The last slide is um, what you will be required. You will, after you implement this practice, a conservation planner will come out and inspect the site and make sure that you have applied your site preparation and uh, that you have planted at the appropriate density that was recommended to you. Next slide, please. Any questions on that? Next slide, please. The next practice is reduced forest stand density to create opens and uh, opening and stand structure. Next slide. In this example, you see where there's some uh, blue tree trees that are marked with blue paint, and those trees are marked to cut so they can thin out and, and reduce the density of that stand. Next slide, please. So this again is a forest stand improvement practice. Uh, it's, it was applicable on the forest land use only. Uh, resource concerns are plant as in wildlife and animal, uh, um, or sorry, animal as in wildlife and your plant uh, productivity, so your forest health. The enhancement lifespan for this is 10 years, so it can only be planned every 10 years. The uh, enhancement description, the purpose of this practice is to reduce the, uh, the basal area or the amount of area that your trees consume to meet the, the needs of a wildlife habitat or forest, um, forest productivity. So to bring your trees down to a, um, the, a something that is uh, specific to that site index. These trees can be uh, marketed. You can do a timber sale that is not a restricted. Um, you will mark down to a density that is also, again, discussed between you and a conservation planner, and it will be appropriate for your operation and your land. Next slide, please. This, this uh, enhancement should not be conducted when there are nesting species specific to that area. Again, that is something that your conservation planner will make you aware of, and that will be specific to your site. Next slide, please. This is an example of a, a forest stand that, that is close to being over its site index and needs to be thinned. And the second picture on the right is a, an area that has already been thinned, and you can see that there is um, areas where they have been thinned out and allows light to get down to the forest floor in the ground cover. Next slide, please. Any questions on that? <clears throat> My last enhancement that I will cover is the E528R, and that is management of intentional intensive rotational grazing. Next slide. This picture is uh, is 
an example of fencing that might be used to facilitate a rotational grazing. You can see here that the, the pasture, one entire pasture has been broken up into three manageable pastures. Um, and that is necessary that will facilitate rotational grazing. Next slide. Again, this, uh, the parent practice to this is 528 prescribed grazing. This is applicable, applicable on pasture and range. So your improved pastures, introduced species, and your rangeland, um, native rangeland. Resource concerns addressed is, is your plant health or your plant productivity. And your enhancement uh, lifespan is one year. So this can be planned every year in your, during your contract. <clears throat> the criteria for this, um, this is to, the purpose of this is to increase your forage productivity and it is based on your forage type and the number of animals. And as mentioned earlier, can even be um, based on your uh, livestock body condition score. Um, again, this is to encourage the most efficient uses of your forage that you have on site. For this, you will um, have a site-specific grazing plan that will be developed for you with an NRCS um, expert. And it will, the plan will include rest periods so your pasture can recover um, and, you know, when dates that are suggested when you should move your animals into different pastures. And this, again, this is based on your, your specific operation, your number of animals and your pasture, con your current pasture condition and your, um, your goals. Next slide, please. So the participant will, um, what you are required to provide is, um, records of when you do move your your animals your your number of livestock that are on the system during that period of time um pictures do help um your your animal balance um all of this stuff will be provided to you in your grazing grazing plan next slide please again here is an example of a um, rotational grazing system where animals had, are just about ready to be moved off of a grazing uh, a pasture. Next slide, please. Any questions? We'll give it back to Ken. At this time, Philip, if you'll stop the recording and my email is listed, ken.lackman at usda.gov. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to send you a copy of the PowerPoint presentation if your email will accept it. It's a very large file and I 